So over the weekend, I rebuilt my main solar power system and it's super powerful. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how I built it. For the most part, this is beginner friendly. This is very easy to build. And I'm also gonna have a blueprint of everything I'm using on my website so you can follow along step by step. Now first, let's talk about what this system can power. The PV input, or how many solar panels you can connect to this system, is 16,000 watts. And the storage capacity of this whole rack is 30 kilowatt hours. And the AC output of these two units at that load center is 13,000 watts at 240 volts. And with that much power, you can back up your house with a transfer switch, you can charge electric vehicles like a Tesla, you can do 240 volt Bitcoin mining, you can use this to power pretty much whatever you wish. And if this is not enough power, you can make it even bigger. You can put six of these units together. And that would give you 39 kilowatts of AC output at 240 volts. You would need obviously more batteries for that type of setup, but you can actually do it with these inverters. Next, they're very budget friendly. If you compare the cost per output of these units and these batteries to other options on the market, these are actually three times cheaper. And a lot of people People didn't take these seriously before because they weren't UL certified or listed, but now they can actually pass an inspection. And the competitor's prices are not going down, so these are a fantastic option. And my favorite, the LV6548, which these are based on, I put megawatt hours of power through it. So I highly recommend these. I leave them running 24 hours a day. So anyways, let's talk about how you can actually build this at home. Now the first step in building this system is having a wall that you can mount it to and you need a non-combustible surface. So what I recommend is cement board or hardy board that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's for $10. And the installation is very easy. You just slap it on your wall and use some screws to hold it to the studs on the other side. And on this system we have one, two, and three sheets of cement board which cost 30 bucks. Next you need to mount these components on the wall and what you want to start with is the all-in-one system. These Need to be 20 centimeters apart and preferably these should be mounted into a stud and on my system i mounted it into the stud with one hole and then drywall anchors with the other hole and that works great but some people recommend having plywood behind their cement board so you can mount it anywhere you wish but you can use either method it's up to you really now after you mount the cement board and these inverters you can connect everything together so first off we have two eg4 6500 ex's these are all all-in-one solar power systems and they're capable of outputting 6,500 watts each. But in this system, I combine these two units to increase their output. So we actually create 240 volts with a split phase output. And what that means is that each unit is supplying a hot lead for that panel. So one bus bar on that panel is supplied by this inverter and one bus bar on that panel is supplied by this inverter. So in a sense, the AC output of these units is in series, but the battery connection of these units is in parallel. And you'll see that down here. Now this is the battery connection for each unit. You have a positive and a negative and a positive and a negative. Now the manual recommends that these cables are two aught gauge. So I'm using pure copper two aught gauge welding cable. Now when you connect these two inverters to a battery bank you have to use equal length conductor and this will allow voltage sensing to be very accurate for both units so you'll notice that the positive is the same length and the negative is also the same length to these bus bars and these bus bars are where you connect your battery so this is the main positive and this is the main negative now both of these units positive is connected to a fuse and these are T-class fuses but Signature Solar recommends for this unit a UL listed breaker and they have that available on their website and I will have that linked below. And whether you use a circuit breaker or a fuse, these should be rated for 200 amps. So a second ago, we mentioned that these are two aught gauge cables that supply the all-in-one systems, but the cable that supplies the bus bar has to actually be larger, especially if you're using only one. So this cable and this cable is four aught gauge, and this can handle the current required by both inverters. And these large cables are what connects this system to the server rack tower of batteries. Now in my system, I have a second battery connected in parallel, and you can ignore this if you're just using a server rack tower of batteries. All you need is this 4 aught gauge cable. Now those large cables connect to the server rack tower on the bus bars, and the positive connects right here, and the negative connects down here. 
and this diagonal configuration will reduce current sharing problems. This will allow all of the batteries to cycle together. Now let's talk about how solar is connected to this system. On each unit, you have two MPPTs. So what you see in front of you, we have one, two, and three and four solar arrays connected. And each input can handle 4,000 watts of solar with a max input voltage of 500 volts open circuit. Now pretty much every regulatory code I've seen requires a PV disconnect, and that is simply a switch to disconnect power from your solar panels. And on this system, we have one over here and one over here. Now in my system, I bought an enclosure and I added some solar disconnect specific circuit breakers. And these are designed to extinguish an arc on a solar string. And you have to ensure that these circuit breakers are designed for this use case. Now this device is a simple switch. So on the bottom, we have our solar panel array wires. And on top, these connect to the actual all-in-one units. Now what I recommend most people do is not to build your own, but to buy a PV disconnect ready built. Um, if you do not buy the proper circuit breakers that are rated for high voltage DC, you will have problems. So buying a ready built one is your safest option and I'll have that linked below. Now this is solar disconnect box number two and this serves the second inverter. And you have again, two high voltage DC breakers in an enclosure. Now the hardest part of the system in my personal opinion is the AC output connections when these are in a split phase output. So first, after you mount these to the wall and you connect the battery and the solar, you wanna connect these together with a serial communication cable. Pretty ugly, but you can't mess up the connection. There's only one way that you can put them in over here and one way you can put them in over here. And this cable comes with these inverters. This will allow these two inverters to communicate so that you can actually program it so that it will have a split phase output. Next, you wanna connect the AC output of these units to a load center. And this is a panel that you can buy at any hardware store and it has a main breaker. And how you make that connection is with flexible conduit. This is very easy to use. And right here, we're using 3 4 inch conduit. If you've never used this before, please watch a video on YouTube. You just cut it with a knife, shove it into this little adapter, and then it screws into the hole on this unit and over here. Now let's take this cover off and I'll show you the connections. First, we need to power it down. This very carefully. And the display will have three cables that you need to disconnect. So first we have the battery connection on the right and the solar panel connection on the left. And in the middle, we have the AC output on the right. So it's these three terminals and the AC input is the terminals on the left. And the AC output flows through this hole and the AC input goes through this hole. And the 6500EX comes with these cable entry glands for all of these holes. And I use those for all the holes except for the AC output because I wanna use flexible conduit. And this is a 3 4 inch connector, but this is a one inch hole. So I actually had to use an adapter from Lowe's so it would fit this hole perfectly. And they're only 50 cents, but make sure that you buy those. Now let's talk about the conductors connected to the AC output terminal. We have a black conductor, which is the hot. We have a white conductor, which is the neutral, and a green conductor, which is the ground. And these are not the same size. The hot and the neutral are six gauge conductors, and the ground is a 10 gauge conductor. The same is true with this unit as well. We have a hot neutral ground and a hot neutral ground. And all six of these wires will connect at the load center in a specific way. So first, this is inverter number one, and this is inverter number two. And inverter one connects over here, and inverter two connects right here. And in my configuration, this is considered the main panel. So we can use the neutral bus bar to connect the grounds and the neutrals together. And you can see that done right here. Here's the neutrals from the inverters and the grounds. We also added the grounding screw and this connects the neutral bar to the case of the load center. Now previously on my last system, I supplied the bus bars through the main lugs, but they don't recommend doing that any longer. What they recommend is using a circuit breaker as a disconnect for both inverters. This allows you to add more inverters to this panel if you wanna scale your system in the future. So this side is for inverters and this side is for loads. And inverter number one, the hot lead, supplies this circuit breaker. And then inverter number two, this hot lead, the black one, supplies this circuit breaker. Now if I had a third and a fourth inverter, they'd be connected right here. And then a fifth and a sixth inverter, they would be connected up here. And then on the load side, we have my EV charger for my Tesla right here. 
And then we have my mini split air conditioner over here. And then this one is not used. Now this configuration works great if you're using this as an off-grid inverter or as a backup for your house with a transfer switch. But there's another ground neutral configuration. If you use these inverters as an uninterruptible power supply and you enable the bypass, you need to treat this panel as a sub panel and keep the grounds and neutral separate. That way the supply from the grid can clear the fault at the panel. If you tie them together over here, you will have problems. But that's the only exception. Everyone else should do it this way. Now the bypass mode gets rid of the ground neutral bond in each unit. But when you have the inverter on, and you have a split phase output, you're gonna have a ground neutral bond in both inverters. And myself and others were actually concerned about this because this can create current on the ground but it's not an issue. I actually talked to Signature Solar and they were talking about different systems that have actually passed inspection. And they said that because this is protected and that the distance is very short, you can actually have current on ground. That only exists when you have a split phase output connection like we have right here. If you have these connected in parallel and you only have 120 volts, you will not have any current on ground. Now what I just said only applies to EG4 and the latest firmware version of LV6. 6548. On older models, there was potential between the ground and the neutral, and you could not use this configuration. You would have to keep the grounds and the neutral separate. But that's no longer an issue now. You can tie everything in on the neutral bus bar. So to summarize everything up, follow this configuration unless you're using bypass. If you're using bypass, keep the grounds and neutral separate, and that's all you need to know. I will have a picture of this configuration on my website that you can copy. Now after these connections are made, you are finally ready to program these inverters so that they can communicate together. Now I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, we need to put this back on. So first we need to turn these on without turning the inverter on. And the easiest way to do that is to connect solar power. So let's flip those switches and then they will turn on, but the inverter is still off. You can notice that this button has not been pressed and this light bar is not illuminated. That means that the inverter is off. And when the inverter is off, we can actually change the settings. You cannot change the settings if this inverter is on. Now to get these to communicate, you only need to change one setting. And you need to define this inverter is 2P1 and this one is 2P2. So let's start with inverter number one. Hold down the enter button and then press the down button and go to setting number 28 and then press enter. And typically it's SIG, but you wanna change this to 2P1 just like that and then press enter and then press escape. And then on the main menu, it should say 2P1. Now on inverter number two, hold down the enter button and go to setting number 28 and it will be SIG, but we need to change this to 2P2. So press the down button and there are two 2P2s. There's 120 and 180. You wanna set it to 180 and then press enter. And this will keep the phases off by 180 degrees. And this will give you 240 volts. And then press this to escape, and then it will say 2P2. Now when you see 2P1 and 2P2 on here, and you have the serial cable connected, now you can turn the inverters on and test to see if you have 240 volts. So press this on button on the front, and it will say 120 volt output, 120 volt output. Now we're gonna test the voltage at the panel. So we have a hot right here and a hot right here supplying this circuit breaker. We have 240 volts between both hots. And from hot number one to neutral bus bar, we have 120. And from hot number two to neutral bus bar, we have 120. And that's perfect. Now we can add this cover. And then after the cover is on, we can turn it on by flipping this switch. This will allow power to go from the inverters to the bus bar and then to our loads. And it actually works. So right now it's charging my car and running my mini split air conditioner. Now I created another video on how to build this battery from scratch. So please check that out if that scares you. Now the final step is establishing communication between this system and these batteries so that these batteries will control how they want to be charged and how they should be cycled. So I'm going to make a video in the future on how to do that. Now Signature Solar recommends the communication system so that the batteries and everything work together, but it is not required. You can easily use these EG4 inverters with other batteries if you have them. All you have to do is change the settings for the charge profile, so the absorption and the float, 
And then there's another setting on low voltage DC disconnect. And that will turn off the inverters when you're at a low state of charge or a lower voltage for your battery bank. And I'll have some example settings on my website next to the blueprints. Now that's pretty much it for this system. Very simple, easy to build, and you can see there's not a whole lot going on here. Now I'm gonna run this system 24 seven for months. If I have any problems, I will let you guys know. I plan to put a few megawatt hours through this system and I use it to charge my car every single day. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you liked it. Please let me know if there's anything else that you wanna know. Um, and yes, we'll cover the communication protocol in another video, but, for a basic setup that is code compliant with high quality gear, for this price, I don't think you can beat it. So please let me know what you think in the comments section below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.